Hey everyone, it's Carl from the Information Lab here. Just thought I'd share a tip and kind of a couple of little tricks that I came up with when working with a client recently. The challenge to me was they wanted to show the last five time periods, but across two different data sets. Those data sets, because they didn't have similar dates and weren't at the same, let's say, grain, the same level of detail, then they couldn't actually join them or blend them together in, in the way that they wanted to, because they still want to see dates from one data set, but the months from the other data set. And we're actually ultimately looking at different time periods. So as you can see here, I've used uh, the sample Superstore sale data that comes with Tableau, still gets shipped with the demo, and also our coffee chain data, which is an old demo Tableau data set. Our, our Superstore is a daily basis, goes up to December 2014, but our coffee chain data only goes up to December 2013, and is at a monthly level rather than a daily level. Well, the challenge from the client was, I don't want to have two individual filters where I'm having to kind of scroll through and my users having to select, well, if I want the last 10 records, I've got to go and find the last 10 days within the data set. And on the coffee chain, they then have to go and change a different filter because they're independent to go and find those last 10 months. So how do you do that? Well, I've just used the term last quite a lot. And that's actually the table calculation that I'm going to go through today. If you've never used it, um, there's a nice couple of little hints and tips that make it really, really easy to use. Some things that, you know, along with me, I certainly didn't expect when I first started to use it. And we're also going to use parameters. Whenever you have this challenge of how do you get a real single interface when you're trying to pull together two independent data sets that need to stay independent, then parameters is your answer. You probably heard me uh, wax verbatim on how great parameters are. This is just another great use case for them. Parameters are user-generated values, so they're not actually linked to the individual data set. So what that allows you to do is actually use a parameter, but because they're not linked to the individual data set, it means you can create one parameter, but use it against most of or all of your other data sets. And what that and how you apply that, sorry is just with calculations within those individual data sets. Calculations sit locally on your individual data sets. Parameters don't, they sit globally across your workbook. So how did I create the ability to change the number of time periods I want to analyze and to pull back different dates and months? It's not difficult calculations, I absolutely promise. So let me show you a clean workbook where I've got these data sets set up. Nothing has happened to them, just loaded them straight in. Let's see what I can go and create. Well, if I pull out my date, first of all, from my coffee chain, I've just dragged out with my right mouse button to get to this level of detail to start with. So here's all my date parts, my date values, my date aggregation. Well, I'm just going to bring back my month, date, year combination. Click on OK. You can see that I've got 24 different columns, so 24 different individual months. Uh, the first of each month keeps coming back. Um, but what if I just want my last five? Well, we can use the last calculation. If I go and create a calculated field, the way that you use the last table calculation, it is a table calculation, and that means Tableau is going to work on the data that comes back from the, the data query, and then it's going to actually look to apply the calculation. So it's really about what's in my view or my window, so the gray shaded area. What data am I showing within there? Well, my last, open bracket, close brackets, that's it. The calculation is valid. That's as simple as using last this. I click on OK. I can go and grab last and I can drop it onto my filter. And I could look at, say, the last 0 through to 5. Now I'd expect to, in this instance to get 5 results back. I actually get 6. Because last, when you look at 0, is the very last data point. And then you get the number back from there. So another 5 as well as the very last one. Our max date in the coffee chain data set was the 1st of December 2013. That's our last, and we get the five previous before that. We're actually going to use that little bit of weird quirkiness to our advantage with the solution, but we'll come back to that in a sec. So if I click on OK, I've got our data, I can go and drag my sales in. I'm going to make this chart a little bit more intuitive, because if I'm trying to show individual time periods, I really want them bouncing off the page. So I'm just going to drag sales out again. At this time, I'm going to create a dual axis chart. So where you see this black dashed line over this far side, that's all about 
Microsoft telling me my Outlook settings are out of date again. It's fine, I don't use Outlook. Um, I can go and drop this in over the far side, create a dual access chart. Because what I'm going to do with a dual access chart is you get multiple marks cards in Tableau. And with those multiple marks cards, I can actually change the mark type on that final marks card that's attributed to and controls this final access. So let's make those circles. Because we've got a different size mark, Tableau's changed the way or the length of that axis. So let's synchronize those together so we can see those individual points. And then I actually don't need this, this access. I can, I can hide that. And depending on what you're trying to show, if you're just trying to show the overall values, well, my challenge was to show variation um, and real, really focusing on the variation so they didn't want to see any variation within their data. So wherever there was variation, they wanted it loud and screaming coming off the page. So wouldn't do this, certainly wouldn't do this with bar charts. Untick include zero, um, waiting for the comments to come back about that. And we can see massively blows out proportion the variation because we're seeing that strongly. But that really was what the client was after in this case. So this is our coffee chain uh, sales. We can have that as our title. And we could go and build exactly the same with our Sample Superstore. But what my user can't do in this instance is actually change the number of time periods that it's pulling back. And whenever a user wants to be able to control that, my mind goes straight away to parameters. As I've already mentioned, parameters sit independent of the two data sources. And we want those two data sources to remain independent. And this is the real beauty of parameters. If I click on the drop down, create a parameter. And what I can do is just call this last n time periods. I'm going to make it uh, integer, just so I'm dealing with whole numbers, and select a range. Let's have one, very to a maximum of, let's say, 20 data periods, and step size of one. So my user can click through them individually, or they can actually scroll through. If you had um, one through to 10,000, and you were doing step size of one, if your user clicking through, they're going to be there a long time. So, so pick a relatively sensible step size. I click on OK and actually show that parameter control. It pops up, looks like a, a filter. If you want to know whether it is a filter or not, click on the little drop down and it will tell you that it's actually a parameter and not a filter. Lovely little tip. But as I change that parameter control, nothing within my data set is changing because I've got nothing going or nothing linking this parameter. It's independent from the data set to the actual data set itself. So let's go and change that. Let's change this calculation. First of all, I'm just going to get rid of that out of my view. Right click on my calculation and go and edit it. And I'm going to use the fact that my last calculation brings back and actually shows that zero value, so the last value, and then all of the others. So when I had five before, it brought back six results. Well, I'm actually just going to say my last is less than my last n time periods. So if my parameter shows five, if I had less than or equal to, it would show six different values. And that doesn't seem logical in my head. Maybe it is for, for you guys out there. Um, again, happy to take the feedback around that. But I'm gonna bring back my my last uh, values up to my la, or the, the fifth last in this case. That's gonna be perfect. Click on okay. You'll see that my last calculation turns into a boolean because we're just testing a statement. Is the last value under the limit the last n time periods? Drop it in, just going to select true. We don't want to bring back those that are below our parameter. Click on OK, and you can see that we bring back five. Scroll that out to 10. We've got 10 different marks. Tableau will always tell you what's going on. It's got 20 as duplicators because we're using dual access. We've got 10 individual columns, so that's pulling back 10 different time periods. Perfect. All right, let's go and apply that to our sales. So we're going to kind of follow the same logic, but this time from our sample superstore, we're going to use our order date. That's going to use exactly the same as we did before, the month, day, year. Go and grab our sales. Let's just create the chart really quickly. It's dual access. A um, couple of different ways to do that. The longer way, uh, use control to copy it out and dual access. Let's synchronize that access. And again, let's um, untick include zero. Most of the sales are a lot lower in this data set, so we don't have to kind of view this in quite the same way. Uh, a lot more days closer to zero, or zero sales days. So a little bit easier to use. Let's uh, hide that axis, and let's turn that second axis to all be about circles instead. You can see that we've got 
1,419 columns. A little bit too much to handle. Now, because calculations are created locally, my, my last calculation is actually over in my other data set. Well, they're created locally, but if you don't use any of the data fields from that calculation or from that data set, because I'm just using a function is less than a parameter, and what I can do is just copy that, close that, jump back across to my orders, create a calculated field, and just go and drop that in. So I'm just using exactly the same thing again. I can even call it the same thing, it doesn't overly really matter, or last. Hit on OK, create a big layer, drop that into my filters, just use it as true. And I'm going to pull back the last 10 again, or to whatever my parameter is set to, the last 10. That's perfect. Let's call that our sales. Um, so, superstore sales. And let's just throw those together in the dashboards. And this was really a, a, a real simple way just to get around having to build and make my users use multiple um, filters. They can now just drag one parameter or scroll through my individual parameter and keep pulling back the relevant number of time periods that they're after. The one thing that people do do wrong occasionally is just the setup of the table calculation. This one's pretty simple. You can either have it going table across because our monthly years are going across our columns, or you can actually just fix it to date. Make sure it's set to true. You're going to get the same back. It just means that if you play around with your, your um, views a little bit more, um, you're more likely to stick with the result that you're actually after if you do set those to be your date. As you can see, in this case, table across works fine, but you can set those up if you're coming up with a slightly different view. Anyway, sneaky little way, leading two data sets, independent, no need to scaffold or any of the other advanced techniques, and hopefully um, a simple way to dive in and follow. Any questions, give me a shout at Data Jedi Ninja on Twitter or